Hi, I'm Laura Zam, and this is Sexual Healing Central, where I help women and people with vulvas solve sexual problems so they can find more pleasure, intimacy, and aliveness. Today, we are talking about the perfect candle to use in the bedroom. So stay tuned. Welcome back. Today we are talking to Liz Lehman, who is the founder and CEO of Illuminate Life. Illuminate Life makes the best candles in the world. I've got mine right here. They are fantastic. And I came in contact with Liz through a program that we're both a part of, but I found her candle months before. I just happened to walk into this really fabulous spa, lovely store, and I found this candle and I fell in love with it. And it's so special. And today we're going to talk about candles, talk with Liz. So Liz, do you want to introduce yourself to us? Absolutely. Hi, I'm Liz and thank you, Laura, for having me here today. And yes, our paths crossed long before we even met each other, which was so amazing. Just out of the blue, you're like, I have your candle. What? It was crazy. Um, But as Laura said, I am the founder and CEO of Illuminate Life. And I am an anesthesiologist who left the practice of medicine to really create a product that heals you in your home, in your sanctuary. And when I talk sanctuary, I'm really considering it your mind and your physical space around you, you know, your body, your mind, and that space. Um, So my story, how I got started on this journey, transitioning careers midlife, um, I had torn my hamstring muscle. I very much was a type A person, always on the go, never listened to my body, didn't stop. And I kept pushing and pushing until my body literally forced me to be still. And in that moment of stillness, while I was, I'll admit, feeling a little sorry for myself, sitting on a frozen water bottle, I came across a blog on making candles. And I don't, I didn't know blogs at that time. I hadn't read them. It just popped up. And I read that. And since I was still in that space of doing and doing, I thought I needed something to do. So I ordered an Amazon candle making kit that day. And through my research in making candles, I was appalled to learn about all the toxins, heavy metals, the dyes, everything that had been in the candles that I'd been burning around my home and family for years. And so I set out to make a better product. Um, a product that was as natural as it possibly could be with essential oils to use as the fragrance. Um, But also being a doctor, I wanted it to be a candle with a purpose. So I wanted it to heal. So I took the essential oils that could um, treat a certain ailment. So if you were having problems with sleeping and you needed a candle to help you sleep. I chose essential oils that enhance sleep, like chamomile, bergamot, things that really relax the mind, relax the body. And then I married it to a healing crystal, um, in the case of sleep, a rose quartz crystal, because it promotes such a loving, gentle energy that really does you know, lead to beautiful dreams and peaceful slumber. And I put it all together to make a product that makes people feel better in their sanctuary. It's so fantastic. Those crystals, when I came upon the candle, I was just, I was so amazed by them. So my candle is called Energy. I think you can see the lid there. And it has red carnelian carnelian. which is really powerful. And since we're talking about, we're talking about the bedroom as a sanctuary, we're talking about romance, but also we're talking about healing, of course, sexual healing central. So what kind of scents and, and crystals would be great for someone who has some sort of journey to, um, to find more connection with their erotic selves? Sure, Laura. I mean, every scent is so subjective, honestly. Um, it's in... 
It's embedded in the oldest part of our brain. The odor molecules go into your nose and they unite in deep in the brain and the hippocampus and the amygdala centers that evoke emotion and pleasure and memory. So it's all very connected. So what one person really loves, the next person, it, that scent may not resonate with them. Or you will find a scent that triggers joy because it reminds you of something you experience. Um, For me, my one of my favorites is, but don't tell, I feel like I'm cheating on my child, like a child. Pick your favorite child. (laughs) But um, Calm is is one of my favorites. Um, I created it because for me, my happy place is sitting on the dock, like by the water, the sun on your shoulders, the wind um, just blowing your hair, the smell of the bay. That is what makes me happy. So I chose um, some narolina, some bergamot, some sage, blended it all together. um, And and that scent reminds me of that place. And then that is married to a sodalite crystal, which is said to clear the mind. It enhances feelings of peace. So maybe I just need to be more peaceful. (laughs) But that is... Right, right. So in that situation, that is an amazing candle. Um, Sleep is fabulous in the bedroom. It just provides such a gentle energy. Um, But if you need to energize your space, the energy candle is also amazing with um, essential oils that are very uplifting, the citrus oils, peppermint, and the red carnelian crystal, which is a super empowering crystal. It, you know, motivates, it revs up your metabolism, it uh, provides courage. So it really depends on what the individual is looking for. Yeah, I think that that you you're talking about such such important issues when it comes to healing any kind of of sexual trauma, let's say, right? Which mm-hmm. is so connected to to memory, connected to right. the amygdala, and you know we might get triggered, activated in this uh, way, right? This PTSD way or anxiety, fear, etc. So one thing that I talk about in my courses is is finding something I call them healthy triggers and mm-hmm. finding things that actually just like a trigger elicit some kind of a calming response or some sort of a, a happy response and and that we could figure those out in advance. So I love this idea and love having maybe a scent, a particular candle that that really does bring us into a place of calm. And we could even use that when we are triggered in this other way or preemptively have have something burning so that if we're afraid we might mm-hmm. get triggered, we we can bring ourselves back to this um, this place of calm and great memories, etc. Awesome. So I want to talk a little bit about the toxicity that you mentioned, Liz. Yeah. Because one thing that you and I've talked about. Uh, and it was so appealing when I walked into the the spa retail place and 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 smelled the candle was that it didn't set off an allergic reaction. I am highly mm-hmm. allergic to scents, which is unfortunate because I love them. Can you talk about maybe why it would be for somebody like me that what are they putting in these candles that are making me giving me headaches, making me sneeze? Um, sometimes I just feel like completely lightheaded and so weird, but not with yours. Well, that's a good thing, Laura. <laughs> um, and I've heard that from several people. A lot of my repeat customers had mentioned that to me, like I could never burn a candle before until I found yours. So when I started on this journey and just, again, researching how to make a candle, um, the wax, it starts with the wax. A lot of mass produced, um, unfortunately, inexpensive um, candles, but actually even some of the very high end candles are petroleum based and have a lot of petroleum in it. So it's a gasoline product um, that in and of itself tends to burn off a little like sooty and smoky as, as the wax burns. Um, the wicks are another component that can lead to problems. A lot of wicks on the marketplace have a zinc core or have um, 
metal in the wick to get them to stand up straight as the candle maker's pouring. It's just things I never even thought about. Um, but you're putting those heavy metals into your home and into your body. So again, for me, I was like, absolutely, we are not doing that. Um, and then you have the dyes. I mean, any colored candle is going to have a synthetic dye in it. And then the fragrance oils themselves, some of them have parabens, some of them have phthalates, you know, all kind of chemical compounds that have been shown to cause cancer. So I knew when I started this project, um, I did not want any of that in any candle I would burn. And both practicing as a physician and now as a candle maker and entrepreneur, it has to pass the my friends and family test. Like, is this okay for me to do to a family member, a person I love? If the answer is no, then it's just not getting done. So I, it's a little bit harder to source coconut wax, but I chose coconut wax um, rather than soy because the coconut wax crops are more sustainable. And I also feel like a lot of soy products have a lot of heavy pesticide. A lot of soy is genetically modified. So I only, you can't use a straight coconut wax for a candle. It's just too soft. But I use almost over 90% coconut wax, a small amount of soy, a small amount of apricot wax, just to provide a cleaner, healthier burn for you. An eco-friendly cotton wick. Even though cotton can soot a little bit and smoke, if you let the wick get too long, you're not putting the heavy metals in your air. And it's it, it's cotton. Um, and then the essential oil fragrances are so much just softer and easier. And as a natural product, they don't trigger that allergic reaction. Um, not every essential oil, however, is burn compatible. As I found out in my kitchen experiment research days where uh, the actual wax ignited <laughs> something with chemistry, it's called a flashpoint. And I thought, hmm, surely those rules of chemistry don't apply to me. Um, as a scientist, I should have known better. Of course they apply. They're like universal, constant. Um, so in cases where I can't use an essential oil because it's flashpoint or the temperature it ignites is too low, I will use a fragrance oil, but um, it is an, a natural fragrance oil. It is without paraben. It is without phthalates. And I think just that combination of everything, it really prevents that allergic reaction, the sneezing, the headaches. I mean, I know some people who are highly allergic to everything and these are the only candles they can burn. So... I'm fortunate that I can bring that to the marketplace. Yeah, so fantastic. And I don't know if I should mention this, but uh, because things might change, but the candles are also, I found surprisingly for the quality, surprisingly affordable. And um, because what, everything you're describing, I'm going, oh my gosh, you know, I hope people don't think that a candle is like $300. This candle was like 15 bucks. Oh, yeah. Oh, they marked it up. It's supposed they to be 14. It <laughs> it's, it's 14. I've had it now since, <laughs> had it now since uh, like for four months and I burn it almost every day. Yeah. It's, it's like only half, half burned down. So I, I really appreciate that. I mean, probably oh. the, the prices will go up at some point, but. <laughs> I hope not because my whole point, um, and I think, you know, when I left the operating room and left doctoring people and I knew in addition to making a product, I wanted to continue my journey of medicine and making people feel better. And to that end, I wanted to create a um, luxury product that enhances health and well being, but that's accessible. I don't want to make a $50 candle. I don't want to make, you know, an $80 candle, and they're out there and people buy them, but I don't want you to have to make a choice. Like, do I have something that makes me feel better? Do I have something that makes me feel pleasure that puts, you know, a romance in my bedroom or not because I can't afford it? No, like it should be accessible to everyone. So that was why I'm trying to do everything I can to keep the price at, you know, at a, at a reasonable cost at a, at a minimum. Yeah, that's great. And I'll, I'll mention too, on the subject of money that I, 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 I'm not an affiliate. I don't get a cut to any of these. I only, <laughs> and I'm not against people doing that uh, as a business practice, but I am, uh, I, 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 I keep it clean. Uh, <laughs> I only right. promote things that I, I really, really strongly believe in and, um, and I don't have a financial relationship. 
um, with the products or the companies. So Liz, can you offer us three tips for, uh, for bringing candles, helping us to, um, to use them for our sexual healing? Absolutely. So this one hits home to me as a reformed type A person, and it is a constant struggle. But what I have found that brings me like just whole healing pleasure in my life is just even taking five minutes of mindfulness a day. Um, Five minutes of meditation, although some people are a little afraid of that word because they think, oh, I can't meditate. I can't do that. It's really just being still. And it's so easy to do. All you need to do, light a candle, find a comfortable place in your home, whether it's sitting down or laying down, just feel your body kind of settling into your space and breathe and just let, you know, the the calm and the peace kind of take over Don't think about what you have to do. Don't think about what you already did. Just be in the moment. And just five minutes a day of that is life-changing. It really is. I mean, and and it enhances your life and your pleasure across the board for for the rest of the day. So that would be my first tip is just to take that five minutes for yourself. Um, another great way to take time for yourself is to establish a bathing ritual. Um, I find the bathtub and just bathrooms, very sensual, very just beautiful, calming place that really nurtures our soul and makes us feel good about ourselves. And when, you know, as you know, Laura, when you feel good about yourself, you're able to give that goodness and, you know, love yourself. You can give love to others. Um, So that bathing ritual is so important. And again, super accessible, super easy to do. Um, Fill your tub, put in your favorite bath salts, put some drops of essential oils in there, light some candles. You can play music. You can bring a book in there, have some herbal tea, wine, whatever you want that makes you happy and makes you feel good. And in part, it's that, again, that quiet moment, that reconnecting with yourself and just in complete relaxation hard to do when you're sitting in the tub. So you can just be and be in that moment again. Yeah. And I'll, add, I'll, I'll just add there from, yeah. uh, you know, if we're reclaiming our sensual selves, we're, we're naked and we've got yeah. this opportunity to, um, to, you know, gently touch maybe parts of the body that feel mm-hmm. particularly vulnerable or to just soothe the, our whole being, or even to maybe, um, you know, stimulate in a way that feels appropriate, but it's, it's a good place. It's really a good place to, um, to find that connection or that uh, the healing that we need and the atmosphere, as you're saying, can really help. Anyway, I interrupted. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. No, no, it was, no, it's perfect because you're right. It, it is all about that and it's all tied together. I mean, you have the the mood and the environment and then that leads to your physical and your sexual and emotional healing all together. There's, it's not like one thing, it's the whole components just go together so beautifully. Um, the next tip I would say um, would be to really treat your treat your space like a sanctuary, make it special. And talking about the bedroom and what candles might be best for, you know, to set the bedroom mood, to have a romantic place, to create that environment of sensuality and sexuality, it, it's so important. And again, accessible and super easy to do. Candles, who doesn't love candlelight? It just brings out romance. It just is is calming. It's peaceful. Um, The light is flickering on the ceiling. You've got the gentle aroma of that. Um, You know, fluffy pillows, comfy beds, soft, fuzzy blankets, um, dim the lights, put on some music and it's, there you go. You're ready. (laughs) Yeah. And one thing I talk about a lot with, uh, with people I work with is a I call it a pleasure access point. There's a lot of pressure for us to, in fact, kind of perform. You know, we've had Mm -hmm. a busy day and then if we have a partner perhaps or we've made an appointment or in our own minds, we we would like to be sexual at a certain time. And often we, we don't give ourselves the space to make a transition instead we're like nope uh uh-uh couldn't possibly do that right Right. the furthest thing from my mind 
And so we just shut down to it because we, we, I think it's a misunderstanding. I think that we believe that we're supposed to just be able to turn on our turn on Mm -hmm. when in fact we need this transition, need this transition from an anxious, busy day to, okay, now I'm, I, I call it, I'm in the mood to be in the mood. I'm not in the mood, but I'm in right. the mood to be in the mood. So now I'm, I'm just a little more open. And the way that that's where the pleasure access point comes in, helping us to get in the mood to be in the mood. But I believe that to do that most easily, we need some kind of accoutrement. We need something to some kinds of pleasure uh, pieces that we can layer on top of each other, and and candles are are just so uh, can be just such an important part of that. That makes so much sense. You're right. You come home after your busy day, and you're like, oh great, we're supposed to have sex tonight. This is another thing to check off the to do list, and. I agree with you. That makes so much sense to, you know, have that transition space, that quiet space, make the bedroom be that space by, you know, dimming the lights, putting the candle in, putting the candles on and just allowing yourself, giving yourself permission to turn it all off. Like you said, then turn it on. That just, you're a genius, Laura. Seriously, that you said it so well, but yeah, like that makes so much sense and, and resonates, you know, to create that sanctuary and set the mood for, for love, for loving yourself, enhancing your pleasure, enhancing your partner. Yeah, that's, that's great. <laughs> Beautiful. So if people do want to find your candles. What is the best way for them to to find them. Uh, absolutely. To find them, we are online. Our website is um, illuminatelife.com. Um, we are in over a hundred locations, um, spas and retail outlets throughout the country and in Canada. So you can, there's a menu on there as well to find a store locally, but feel free to contact us through the website. If you are interested in like a sample or you have questions about a scent or, or really wanted to know what scent may resonate best with you. I'm always happy to answer questions. Fantastic. And this will exist as a video, as a blog post, and also as a podcast. So wherever you're accessing this interview, (laughs) the link will be right there for you. Liz Lehman, thank you so much for allowing me to talk with you and for giving us all these great tips. Later today, because I've got a busy day today, I am going to light my candle for five minutes and just smell it and look at the flame. (laughs) Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure to be here and to communicate and connect with you as always. So great.